What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to tackle a very difficult episode request that came over the weekend, which was wanting to know more about energy management and breathing techniques that you can utilize during the fight. And I'm gonna go one step further today because I'm not just gonna talk about energy management and breathing techniques in the fight, but also before the fight, in training camp, as you're walking out to compete, when you're in the locker room, we're gonna talk about it all. I didn't really clue in to breathing exercises and energy management until I got a little further in my career. Initially, I thought probably like most people out there that you go to the gym, you hit really hard, you bang away, you breathing, and that's enough. That's everything you need to do. But then I started doing some research on what not just high level fighters are doing, but high level athletes in soccer, surfing, all different sports, what they are doing to increase their cardiovascular abilities. And once I started researching this, I was able to start incorporating it into my own fights, my own training. So what we're gonna talk about first, let's go in order. We'll talk about in the gym, we'll talk about just before the fight on fight day, and then we'll talk about actually in the ring. Before the fight, in training camp, I've talked with you guys before, I've actually done a full episode on breathing techniques that you can utilize usually at the end of a workout where you're trying to maximize your lung capacity. You're trying to really engage the lower part of the lungs, which don't always get touched. And you might think, well, when I work out really hard, I get to the deep part of the lung. But a lot of times we shallow breathe. Even when we finish something really hard, like if I ran a 400, I might not be going all the way in and out. I'm probably going more like just utilizing sort of the upper half of the lung. So what I was taught, what I was told to start doing was utilize these breathing exercises at the end of my training sessions so that when I get to the point where I need to utilize the full lung, it's there. I've activated it previously. Now I would just simply suggest that you go to the follow along video, which I already pointed to before, because I don't wanna spend 10 minutes here running through the same thing which I've already done. And if people have already watched it, they don't need to watch it a second time, they can refer to that video at any point. So let's move on and talk about energy management when we're in the gym. And not, you know, energy management, kind of like, oh, I'm taking a break. Let's talk about actually mid-round. You're in the middle of the round, the, the buzzer's clicking down towards the, the break time, and you're going, oh, I'm feeling fatigued. I need a break, it can't come quick enough, but I don't have that luxury. I don't have the luxury of sitting down right now. So how can we recover? Well, the first thing we need to be able to do is recognize different outputs. So when I hit super hard, when I'm on the offense, trying to knock somebody out, that's kind of like my 100%, that's 100% output. We don't wanna do that every time we throw a punch, we want to have different outputs. So 100%, I'm trying to put the guy away. More like 70, 80% where I'm looking for a shot, I'm, I'm looking for that opening, as opposed to just throwing every shot hard and not recognizing that maybe nine out of 10 of them won't even land and there's not much point in exerting all my energy. So when you hit the bag, when you're doing pad work, recognize that not every shot needs to be 100%, 100%, 100%. Sometimes it's like 80%, look for openings. 80%, oh, there's an opening, 100%. And then we need to be able to recognize that when we're not throwing and we're on the outside, we're on a full-time break. Like right here, what am I doing? Maybe with a little bounce, 10%, but I need to be able to utilize proper breathing techniques to make sure that I'm not fatiguing. So if I'm out here and I'm doing shallow breathing, it's gonna be very difficult for me to recover. But if on the outside, I can do a couple of nice deep breaths, I'm gonna recover much faster. And then by the same token, defense. Defense should not be 100% or 80% output. It should be more like 30 or 40, but that comes with your comfort level and your ability to control your breathing while you keep your core tight. If when you tighten your stomach, you right away go whoop and, and oh, okay, I'm fatigued from that. That's no good. I'll actually just give you guys a demo here. My stomach's relaxed, I'm talking to you, and then all of a sudden I go, okay, stomach is tight. I'm squeezing as much as I can, but you shouldn't really notice a massive difference in the way I talk. It's a little different, but then when I relax my stomach, 
you shouldn't really notice too much else. I go back to tight, I'm squeezing. So you can train the ability to tighten up muscles and still get proper air intake. But a lot of people don't do that. They don't sit down, tighten their stomach, and just work on regular breathing. I should be able to have this tight and continue to talk to you guys and not fatigue in the way that most people will. So one of the first things I would suggest, if you're sitting down at school, tighten your stomach, hold it for five minutes. Nobody in the rest of the class should be able to tell you're doing anything. You shouldn't be scrunching your face or having to breathe really deep because of it and just learn to tighten up. And then when you can do that, your defense, the energy output on defense will become so much less because you're used to this, you're protected. You can then protect your head and not worry if a shot bounces off your stomach because you're ready for it. Anyway, I could go on and on about all the energy management and the breathing techniques, things that we can do when we're in training, but I don't wanna kill it to death. I think that's enough for the moment. Let's move on to pre-fight. And I specifically want to talk about when you're backstage, when those nerves are just bubbling up and you're getting really scared, what can you do with your breathing at that point? Well, one of the first things that I like to do is I like to literally lay down about two, two and a half hours before the fight, close my eyes and just work on calming myself. It's just normal, slow, controlled belly breathing. We breathe from the belly. You're gonna do a lot better with the technique than breathing through your chest. So I just lay down and I just do that. Then once I start getting to the point where I start getting into my warm up, I get mid warm up, you know, I do my little warm up stretch and I've talked about the proper warm up before and things that might happen. You can find that on the channel as well. But really what you need to make sure you're doing is take little breaks if you start to get really nervous mid warm up. A warm up does not need to be straight. Go, go, go. I do my stretch, do a little shadow boxing. Then maybe I get my gloves on. Now anyway, what I want to talk about is some point here, you might walk away from the little group, you might go to the washroom, something. And I read about GSP doing some breathing techniques and looking in the mirror and convincing himself that he could win at this point. And when I read about that, I went, ooh, I should do that because I go to the washroom a lot of times because you know, the stomach's nervous and everything. So I end up going to the washroom multiple times. And when I'm back there, sometimes I get extra nervous. So in some of my last fights, I just went up to the mirror and I just kind of just stared myself in the eyes. And then I just go, you can do this. You're gonna win the fight tonight and just give that positive reinforcement. That's another point leading up to the fight where you can work some breathing exercises. The last kind of breathing exercise I do as I'm walking out to the fight is I pre-pump my heart up. I remember reading one time about an athlete who would sit down and she could get her heart rate up to 180 beats per minute visualizing her sport. I can't remember what it was. It was some winter Olympic sport, but she basically she would visualize the sport and work on <sighs> lots of heavy breathing. And she'd get her heart rate up to 180 beats per minute. And once I read about that, I went, oh, you know what I also want to add in is when I'm walking out just before I'd make the walk to the ring, I give myself a little bit of heavy breathing, fast breathing. <sighs> and I usually, pound myself on the chest a couple times. And I just get that heavy heart, and I just get that heart rate pumping up and just kind of that blood pumping to the brain. And then I find that when that point comes in the fight early, you know, you jump in, you throw your first big combo, my heart rate isn't out of control because I did my warm up, and then if I had to wait a while until I did my walkout to the ring, I utilize that fast breathing just to get my heart rate back up again, kind of like that Olympic athlete was able to get her heart rate up to 180 beats per minute. I'm not getting it up that high, but I'm just giving it a little jump. Now let's talk about actually in the fight. The first thing, and probably one of the more important elements of recovery in the fight is when you actually go back to your stool and you actually have your rest time between rounds. Now the first question you might have is, should I sit down? Or should I stand up in the corner? Because you see both. And I've tried out both. And personally, I don't notice a massive difference in terms of recovery through the heart 
But for the legs, if my legs are feeling a little fatigued or my shoulders are feeling a little fatigued, I do like to be able to sit down, take the weight off the legs, or throw my arms back and just kind of rest them on the ring ropes. I find that is very helpful in alleviating some of that fatigue that has built up in the limbs. So if somebody said, should I sit or should I stand? I would say, I'd take the seat. I know people talk about standing being something that's going to sort of psych your opponent out. They look across, they go, why is he not sitting down? He must not be tired. I've never thought that. I never look across and assess the guy's tiredness based on whether he sits or stands. I assess it based on how he's performing in the fight and what kind of breathing I see out of him. Now, much of what happens in the ring is quite relatable to the training elements, which we talked about earlier in the episode. You want to make sure that every shot you throw is not an attempt at knocking your opponent out or down. Because when you do that, you might have a shot where you know you're going to land off this guy's guard. He's already blocked, but you're like, I'm going to go 100%. Why? You know the shot's not going to put somebody down. So being able to regulate your output is going to help with that energy management. The other thing that we can do to make sure that we're getting our breathing on point is just really focus, and you can do this in training camp as well. If you don't do it in training camp, you will not pull it off in the fight, but really practicing every time you throw a shot, not holding your breath. You breathe out, or you ah yell. You give something when you throw shots. Don't hold your breath as you combo up. And you come out one breath on the first punch, and then you hold. You need to be able to so it's very fast breathing. It's in and out, in and out, in and out, which is why I like the breathing exercise that I talked about when we're walking out to the ring where we're kind of because we're essentially doing that when we're throwing shots, maybe even faster. If you can practice that type of breathing properly in training camp, then when you have to execute in the fight, your body's used to it and you will be able to control the energy and the breathing that much better. Now, as the fight goes on and you get more and more tired, let's talk about the breathing technique in particular that you need to utilize to make sure you can maximize recovery if the opportunity presents itself. And in particular, I want to talk about actually in the fight, not when you're sitting down in between rounds, but actually in the fight. You certainly don't want to be that guy who leans over and has to catch his breath down here. It always makes me laugh when I see somebody do that actually in a fight. You need to have your poker face. You need to make sure that this guy does not recognize that you're tired, but still be able to recover. So sometimes that's just and this is where that deep breathing comes in, the deep breathing training, which we talked about. Because if you're able to maximize your breath and hit the lower part of the lungs, you're gonna be able to recover that much better. But if you have not done that type of training, it's gonna be more of a shallow breath. You won't get a full amount of air and it'll have to be two breaths. And that's when we see people's chest start pumping and they're just not able to recover as quick. Do not kid yourself. This breathing stuff, is going to make a world of difference in your energy management and your ability to recover when you're sitting down or mid round. And you need to take some time and you need to actually put in a month and try the breathing exercises, which I've already referenced. In fact, let's just do one. Let's do one right now together. We'll keep it simple. Then we'll wrap up the episode. We are going to inhale for as long as we can and then exhale for ideally twice as long. So, for the sake of this, just based on the fact that most people, if you have not done this, will not be able to do something like a six second breath in and a 12 second breath out, or a seven second breath in and a 14 second breath out. Since a lot of people won't be able to do that, let's start off and let's just go for simple. We'll go five and 10. I'm gonna utilize my phone here. So I have the exact time. The trick on this one is five seconds goes by fast. So you gotta fill your lungs up 100% with a massive inhale breath. Then on the breathing out, you have to keep it going and going and going and going until you empty everything. So really flush everything out. So in the last second or two, you're screaming. Your body is screaming for air and then you can get that quick inhale. What I'm gonna do, because I don't have the ability to talk to you as I breathe, I'm gonna come up when we breathe in and down when we breathe out. And I'll probably come from about here, so we go up, and then way down here. And then I'll quickly shoot my hand back to here, and we'll do a five seconds in, 10 seconds out, shoot my hand back to here, so on and so forth. Let's go for five rounds. 
I'm still getting over an illness, so my breathing, my deep breathing, I could probably use this right now anyway, but it will not be spectacular. So ready, three, two, one, and let's go. and time. Now, if you found that easy in any way, what you very simply need to do now is make everything longer. You breathe in for the six seconds, you breathe out for 12. Or if you're a superstar, you breathe in for seven seconds, out for 14. Remember, you can do this much easier if you slow your breath, you control your breath. But the point is, breathe in fast and deep, and then breathe out fast and long. And you wanna see if you can double the exhale compared to the inhale. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode on breathing techniques and energy management. It's a difficult thing. It's very personal, and you might find techniques that you want to utilize, which I did not talk about today, but hopefully this is a good starting ground for anybody out there who just wants to get a little bit stronger in their lung capacity. If you enjoyed the episode, guys, give it a like. If you haven't already, join the channel, get subscribed, train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.